Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. It is always a great day after a Flyers win, especially another Flyers win against Pittsburgh, where we beat them by three goals yet again after an empty net sealer by Limbla. I'm Joe Boric of SportsMag News and SteelFlyers.com, joined by the very own Steel Flyers today. How are you doing today after the Flyers win, Steel? Oh, it's always a good day when we win. <laughs> I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. How are you doing? Doing well, doing really well. And I think the first guy we have to start with is uh, Carter Hart, uh, because uh, he, wow. uh, our second periods of both games so far, actually, he really stepped up because we left him out to dry even some in the first game, just not in as much glaring sense. But in the second game, he really on breakaway at the breakaway, I think I yeah. remember three breakaways he saved in the second period, and then some that uh, the one that Tanev was around, able to actually get around Provorov on that impressive play, he was also able to save. So there was a couple key and crucial saves. That one glove save early on, too, early issue on that JJ said you actually saw a little bit of flair from Carter Hart. What do you mean? You don't usually see that. That was kind of fun to see. But uh, what did you think of him and how impressive he was in the second, especially? Well, I'll tell you what. Here's the thing. Um, to quote uh, our our favorite announcer, Jim Jackson, he said that Kata Hot saved our bacon. Okay? And that was so true because he was our best defenseman during our power play that we got outshot on. How does that happen? We're, we're on the power play, and they had five shorthanded shots on, on us. That That's ridiculous. And he was there to help that take care of that. And that's what I think is what swung the game, especially in the second uh, period there for us, because he basically was our best player in both second periods in both games. You know what I mean? And so <clears throat> that's what I think. That's what I think was where he won the game was right there by stopping those shorthanded attempts uh, for Pittsburgh. And then also the breakaways too, you know what I mean? You can't say enough about the kid. He faced 33 total shots, you know, and he only let in two and he only let in two the previous game after facing virtually the same number of shots. I think it was like what, 34 yeah. or 35 shots or something like that. You know what I mean? So Carter Hart is the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, the first game he faced 34, and then in this game he faced 33. So it's pretty much identical. And then Jake Voracek said the scary thing is he can be better as well. As oh, his, uh, we've quoted. seen him play better. <laughs> so, yeah, we've seen him even do better than he did. And our great uh, friend Jamie Baskell said, Carter Hart is off to a great start in the new season. Hiccups, he has some, but overall he has been great. He stole the game last night. Hart is the best goaltender in the East Division and will win a Vezina in the future. It's great to finally have no goaltending problems in Philly. <clears throat> what he said. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, goal, that, that no goaltending problem extends to um, Ersan, and if he ever comes over for Dotorf, is doing good in the K, and then Ersan's yeah. doing good in the Swedish League. And then if Sandstrom's able to man himself, uh, stay healthy as the uh, starter now in Lehigh Valley, their yeah, goaltending is really uh, yeah, fixed. Yeah. Um, and maybe next year we can get Ivan. We can pry, pry, hopefully pry him away from Russia. If you know what I mean? Yeah, as a few yeah. shows, he's not going to be starting. So. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> it's going to have to be a sweet deal to bring him over. In fact, it's probably going to have to be almost a, a pretty much slot him in as a starter backup. or a backup, backup and or a starter at AHL level. You know what I mean? So. Carter Hart played really well. Uh, he definitely saved our bacon. Uh, not just – look, he made up for his little mistake in the first game. First game, he kind of gave the puck away there to Sydney and allowed Sydney to get his first goal. Uh, and and I think with him taking the game away uh, for this game here was the, the retribution to kind of give the puck away to Sydney. Agreed. He has a 2.50 goals against through two games. He's getting off to a flying start again. Another guy getting off to a flying start is Oscar Limbalom, who for back-to-back -back years uh, scored one empty netter last night and the night before one off his noggin when TK uh, back <laughs> it in as he was down in front of the net. Uh, but he was still able to score two goals in the first two games and has just looked very active on the ice, otherwise making some key defensive plays, that very nice block that shook him up as well. So what do you think of Oscar's play in the first two games thus far? 
we've talked about this on numerous shows. We've touched about on the fact that Oscar Lindblom, went, after he was diagnosed with cancer and was able to completely come back in the playoffs and played relatively well, though he looked a little thin. But, man, he has come back this year with training camp with some time off, and he looks bigger, he looks faster, he looks stronger. And he, I think he's going to be another difference maker. This was like winning the lottery for the, for the Flyers because they were looking for that 3C guy. They were looking for that creative offensive guy, and he's already on the roster. Hey, <laughs> Oscar Lindblom. Yeah. Utterly, utterly impressed with how he has come out of the gates. Same here, same here. And we also saw the next guy we have to talk about is the hat trick hero that we saw how good at Frisbee Gritty is. As <laughs> well, that was a really big hat. Big, <laughs> his big hat onto the ice uh, <laughs> as a TK scored the hat trick. And we also saw how good at soccer uh, Travis Konechny also is yesterday as well. Um, but he was able to put one in in front with his stick right in front of the net for the first goal. Second goal was crashing on a rebound that went off his foot. And the third goal was trying to do a similar thing to the first goal and slap it, but he missed, and then it hit off his leg. So uh, he played really well, though. He was buzzing around the ice yet again after doing the same in the first game. Uh, Obviously, you think he played great, and he's either the first or second star of the night, depending where you put Hart, but... What do you think of Konechny? And I mean, what a hat trick in the second game of the season, the first of his uh, career. That's a great way to come back after having a struggle in playoffs. I was just going to say, it's been 20 games since he scored last. Okay. He was completely and utterly disappeared in the playoffs. He was completely and utterly non-existent. And then in the first game back, I mean, he, he looked a little tentative a little bit, but he started getting a little bit more feistier there towards the end of the game. But man, this game, he just came out with all guns blazing. Yeah. I mean, it just Great seemed word. like he's in mid season form already. Uh, okay. But I'm liking, I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. He seems to have, gain some maturity okay and it, he's buying into the system even more and he seems to be in the right spots at the right time you know what i mean correct and yes. yeah and him playing he's on that line even more now too they asked av about that that's definitely a good sign of advancing your game as well exactly exactly so that's why i think i think that fletcher was 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 not hesitant at all in letting him take his time and then signing TK to a nice deal um, to, to keep him on the team for a little while. And it's paying dividends now, man. First hat trick for the kid. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, he's definitely playing really well. Another guy that really showed up on the assist sheet with the tic-tac-toe pass and then setting up Proveroff yesterday was uh, Jake Voracek being able to get his points on the board after uh, being very visible on the ice yesterday after having an off game in the first game. But you know he's a guy that's going to bounce right back nine times out of ten, and he showed exactly that. Um, And then that's all we really had to say about uh, Jake. And then we also had G. uh, G, again, was able to get on the assist board, uh, was able to get already – um, his second or yeah, second assist, I believe it was of this campaign. So uh, it was great to see Claude Giroux get by in the play again. He had and two, has been pretty. Go ahead. He had two assists. He had two assists in last night's in last night's game, and I think he had two assists in the or three assists in the previous game. He had. I thought he only had one in the previous game. If Maybe. He had one. I don't know. He was playing on that line. That line was responsible for what... I think he had one for Hayes' uh, goal. So I think he has three total assists. I misspoke. He has three total assists this season. Three, okay. He's his goal for the first game. And then in this game, he had two assists. So yeah, he's been the playmaker. He's been good on the puck. But a guy that we uh, have to wrap this up with before we get to Sean Couturier is also just how active and buzzing uh, Nolan Patrick has been. Nolan Patrick... Uh, yesterday was able to get an assist on the TK uh, second goal for Travis Konechny of last night's game and also obviously was able to get that nice goal off of his buttocks as uh, Scott Hartnell would say (laughs) um, in the uh, first game there as well so what do you think of Nolan Patrick's play? Also agree with you on that look I think Pittsburgh played very well in the second period in both games and I think Pittsburgh outplayed us 
for a good portion of the game uh, with their speed. But I think that uh, the Flyers were able to match that speed with Nolan Patrick. Okay, and with his tenacity and the way he's been playing, he look, we all said this, too. We all agreed that him and Oscar Lindblom and Nolan Patrick were going to be difference makers coming back to the Flyers this year. And we're starting to see it pay right off. Right off the gates, we're seeing him score. We're seeing him up, up on his skates. We're seeing him play really well. He's taken some hits and popped right back up. He's blocked some shots. He is looking like the second overall pick that the Flyers selected a couple years ago, finally. Yeah, he's using his body. He's getting in front of the net. He's playing good on defense. He's definitely showing he's poised. If Cooch is unfortunately out with that shoulder for an extended period of time to move up to that second line, have either Lawton move up for, to the third and have Bunneman slot into the fourth or yep. have Frost just slot into the third and keep Lawton on the fourth with uh, Patrick still moving the up winger. to the second. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so um, what do you think uh, they're going to do there? But I think either way, we're set up very well with uh, depth. It's just you're never going to replace Sean Couturier. No. You just got to put somebody into the lineup yeah. that you think's going to gel well with who they're with and be able to replace some of the output he has. I'm a little bit concerned because this is a potential second shoulder issue with him in the last couple of years, because you remember a couple of years ago where <clears throat> they didn't allow him to take faceoffs for quite a while, uh, but I think it was a, maybe it was an arm. I don't know if it was that a was shoulder. Something, yeah. I think that was something with his hand or something. Oh, okay. Like All right. Like arm. Yeah, okay. I well, I, I am, I am concerned about it being a shoulder um, ish, issue with him because that's going to affect his face offs and he's very good at that. And that's where we definitely missed him last night is for sure. But Nolan Patrick stepped right in. Okay. And was really good on draws last night. And he was really good on draws on the first night. OK, I mean, I think he was like eight for 14 or something like that in the first night for on draws. OK, so pfft, all right. I, we really need Couturier, but but I think we'll be able to slot Bunneman in or if you want to bring Frost in and just kind of move him to the wing and just move everybody up. Or if you want to bring Bunneman in and just take his slot right out, right. You know what I mean? Either way, and then I think it's going to depend on who we're going to be playing as well, too, because the next game is going to be Buffalo. So we might we might be able to bring Frost up and use that more offensive type where Bunneman's more of a conservative player, more of a, a defensively minded player. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, I think it might depend on that. I do think Patrick definitely showed his poise to uh, jump right in. I think if Frost jumps in for this lineup, you could see a match center because he could play third line center and just fit in uh, there rather than moving him to the wing. Because if you move him to the wing, then someone else is going to have to move in the exactly. center. So I think I would just do that. But my uh, final takeaways um, from this game would be um, that I just think we played, we started off obviously blazing in the first Then what you try to do as a coach is remove your goaltender to spark your team, which happened when Sullivan did that and putting Casey to Smith. And Pittsburgh was able to put some spunk and fire, but Carter Hart was able to answer them after those two goals. And then we came out forechecking. Uh, They were talking about on the telecast, the forechecking to start the third period was ridiculous. It was like nobody was able to get uh, chances to start the third period. We came out really uh, coming out with a great uh, tactic to defend the lead, in my opinion. And then we were able to get some more scoring chances, of course, in the third period as well. Uh, TK to be able to get his uh, Hattie and then for obviously Oscar Lindblom to be able to deposit that empty net goal there. So I just think they were able to close it out well again, obviously, like they were able to do in the first game. We just had a rough middle and that's something that you're going to have to correct, but you're going to have games like this. Not every game is going to be peaches and gumdrops like most of the first <laughs> game, like most of the first game was. Yeah. You're going to have some games that things don't go as smooth sailing as you think. And that's why you have a Vezina caliber goalie. Now, that's why the teams with the best goaltenders go the farthest, because all of teams in the NHL have games that they lay an egg and still win if they have top goaltending. But I'm going to tell you what, though. You, I, I think Pittsburgh showed a little bit more uh, muster 
in these two games, even though even though they lost. And we didn't we we feel that they're maybe not going to be the same type of team that they have been. But they definitely brought in some speed, you know, and they definitely brought in some people that can skate. OK, and so I was quite impressed with how Pittsburgh played against Philadelphia. I was impressed with how well they played, especially in the second period. And they outshot Philadelphia drastically uh, last night in the game. By so 13, yeah. That's what I mean. You know what I mean? Now, now Philly only had five block shots, but Pittsburgh had 11. OK, so that would have been. You know, that would have put it maybe a little bit more even, but I just think Pittsburgh showed a little bit more uh, than than what everybody was kind of maybe thinking. And although I still don't have them making the playoffs this year, I think they're still going to be uh, a team to be reckoned with, especially down the stretch, because you can't ever count out uh, Malkin and Crosby. No, I agree with that. It's going to depend how their defense performs. Their defense didn't look too great in the first two uh, games. And neither did their goalie. And Yara did there. not look good either. No, uh, and it's a new season. Uh, you know you're the full-time dude now. Sometimes you need a little bit of time to adjust to that. I think a guy like DeSmith that would have actually won the job if it wasn't for cap reasons potentially last year, and Yari also performed well in camp, uh, would have been uh, – it's going to be interesting to see how he does because he looked pretty decent when he came in. Yeah, he uh, did. Then, yeah, he uh, did. Mm-hmm. Then he got some get shots that there was no chance he was saving that connect me uh, shot in front. He was wide open. So, but I think the Flyers had an overall. Uh, they were able to perform well because Carter Hart, our Vezner caliber goalie, played like a man on a mission out there, and TK played like a man on a mission out there. For me, my three stars of the game, just because of how he stepped up in the second, I would give the first to Hart, the second to Konechny, and the third is kind of tough. But uh, I would give it to, I would say, Van Riemsdyk, just because he got two assists in this game for already after getting a goal in the first game. So just to keep going on the, on the realm of uh, giving him a award there at this point. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with all the Youngs. All the way through, I'm going to go with TK, and then I'm going to go with uh, uh, Patrick, and then I'm going to go with Lindblom for my three stars. TK being one, um, Patrick being two, and well, Lindblom being Clark three. Clark? Well, well, he can be one A. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, one 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 B. So that yeah. that's four. St- now that's four stars. Now, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why you need to get him in there. That, it was tough. It was tough. Yeah. But you said you. You know. Yeah. But you gave it to Carter Hart. So I was like, all right. Well, I can't pick Carter Hart. So I <laughs> I would normally though, because yeah, he played really stellar. He basically saved but our enough. bacon. Yeah, yeah, that's a great way to put it, like JJ did, but he played phenomenal. But anyway, as another great way to put it, like our friend Pierre Wisdom would say, that is our full 42. It's really our full 18 minutes, but everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. This has been our reaction to the Flyers. 5-2 to two win. We beat Pittsburgh by three again. It's a great start to the season to start 2-0, and o, beating those pesky pens. Enjoy the day, everybody, and get ready for the next game on Monday against the Buffalo Sabres. Let's go Flyers anytime, anyway, anywhere, baby. Gritty days of summer. Now it's the gritty days of winter. Let's get them and let's get at them. Peace out, everybody.